for Deontay Wilder fight in the heavyweight division to unify those championships. You know, I'm a big Deontay Wilder fan. But this kid, Anthony Joshua, man, he can fight. Now, I don't know if he can if he can beat Wilder because I've seen Wilder, you know, I've seen a larger sample size for for Deontay Wilder. But Anthony Joshua can fight should be a pretty good matchup, man, um, if those promoters can make that fight. So you know how it is in, in, in boxing. I said if. And like Coach Webb said in Neal Middle School on Wake Forest Highway in Durham, North Carolina, if if and buts was candy and nuts, it would be Christmas every day. So if this fight can be made, it will be epic. It will be one of the best heavyweight fights of recent memory because, but like you said before, Pia, both these guys, heavy punchers, it could either be over in the first round yeah. or, it can <laughs> or go 12 it can go all 12 man or it can go I 12 mean, really intriguing matchup it's a handful of fights out there that i'm intrigued to see one of them's joshua and wilder another one's just got signed by the way andre ward and sergey kovalev and then of course triple g and canelo alvarez though canelo just dropped back down to 54 so not sure if that fight is going to happen but boxing right now is as you like to say poppington ah, yes sir yes sir and speaking of canelo and and triple g the winner i've heard it um i think i just saw this on twitter um instagram one of them the 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 winner of that triple g canelo fight um, they're gonna fight me to unify the um. <laughs> what? Well, why are you laughing? I don't understand. What's so funny? Man, we got a tough break, man. <laughs> I will be taking on. I will be taking on the winner of that Triple G Canelo fight to unify that championship. I mean, come on, man. I mean, I'm a grown man. Ladies and gentlemen, my brother is a grade A comedian. No, but but getting back to that 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 um the boxing, you know, all, all seriousness. Yeah, man. I you know I'm like you. I love boxing, and um, it's good to see boxing on network television again and and it's good to see boxing making a comeback and it's in the consciousness of you know the american public man because like you said the heavyweight division is so is so important in the sport of boxing and when you got a an american heavyweight champion in deontay wilder who could potentially take on a a another champion a european champion actually you know in anthony joshua former olympic gold medalist and we're going to talk about the olympics coming up in brazil um, a little bit later um, it's nothing nothing but good things are, are happening right now in the sport of boxing it is popping 10 we got to go to break right now but when we come back on the other side we'll get into our interview with mr al daniel reflecting on his time and the impact of pat summit on not only the basketball world not only the world of sports but the entire globe man pat summit touched a lot of souls we'll get into that also, later on in the show, top five women's basketball players of all time, all that and more on the All Things Sport Podcast with Damian Banks and Pierre Banks. Thank you for listening to the All Things Sport Podcast with Damian Banks and Pierre Banks. Be sure to check out the In My Humble YouTube channel for all your sporting needs. What up? This is Pierre Banks, and when I'm back in Boone watching the Mountaineers, my first stop is always Mountaineer Mania. The good folks at Mountaineer Mania have the widest selection of app gear, so you can cheer on the Mountaineers in style. T-shirts, hats, hoodies, sweatshirts, decals, cornhole sets. I mean, if you need it, they've got it. So head on down to Mountaineer Mania at 497 West King Street in Boone and tell them I sent you. back with more of the All Things Sport Podcast with Damian Banks and Pierre Banks on Spreaker Radio. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. And we are back with the All Things Sport Podcast. I'm Pierre Banks. He's Damian Banks. Before we went to break, we're just about to get into a little hoops action. Hoop dreams, if you will. A lot of dreams have been realized, Damian, as the 2016 Olympic USA men's basketball team has been announced. One or two head scratchers on the list. One, really. But for the most part, man, looks like we're going to have a good team going into Rio, man. Give us your thoughts. Yeah, man. Uh, Rio Olympics in Brazil is coming up shortly. The U.S. men's national basketball team has been announced. Um, 
let's get to who's not on the team first. Um, there's no Braun, fresh off of his championship. There's no Steph, fresh off of losing the championship. There's no CP3, no James Harden. So it's a lot of big names that are missing off the team in, in, in Rio. But there are some names still left. KD still playing. Melo. You got Kyrie. Now, you said, my man, <laughs> a head scratcher. It has to be Harrison Barnes, right? It got to be. Like, it has to be. <laughs> like, this man was, at one point during the finals, he was two for his last 22. <laughs> I mean, not even that aside. Even if he would have had a fantastic finals. I'm not trying to pick on Harrison Barnes. Are you trying to tell me that Harrison Barnes is one of the best players in the NBA? Because that's who's supposed to be on the Olympic team. I'm having a hard time. I mean, Harrison Barnes hasn't even made an all-star game. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, it all depends on who accepts the, the invitations, who wants to play I in understand, the game. I understand you know, LeBron's that. LeBron's not playing. I understand that. It's a lot of people who, who need to be on the team, but as Lady Mormont said on Sunday. You refused the call. <laughs> yeah, you you didn't answer the call. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that little girl, she had a nice little speech, man. Game of Thrones. Let's get off subject a little bit. Okay, U.S. Men's Olympic Basketball. Team. We'll, be, we'll be back shortly with you. Game of Thrones <laughs> season finale. Like Marty Mall say, man, it was all that. It was all that. Yeah. That episode single-handedly put that television series in a league of its own. It's It single-handedly put that series as one of the greatest TV series I have ever seen. Hands down. Yeah, man. Wonderful. Hold on. Wonderful is not even a word. Outstanding. Oh, outstanding is not even the word that I want to use. Terrific. Uh, stupendous. Whatever. Whatever superlative that you want to use. This episode solidified Game of Thrones is one of the best HBO series of all time, man. If you're not a Game of Thrones fan, I understand. But you're you're less of a human being. <laughs> It put it up there in the category with The Sopranos, definitely. Yeah, Game of Thrones, this season finale, trying to tie up some loose ends, trying to tie everything together. You know, I got to talk about my boy Jon Snow. He is the chosen one, Pete. He's the chosen one. Yeah, I kind of figured that, you know, and I don't want to give away too much because your twin brother and my brother, Damon, called me in a fit of rage last week because, you know, I gave away Game of Thrones. The podcast airs on Friday. The show aired the Sunday prior. I'm not sure how I ruined it for him, but I don't want to give away <laughs> too much information. But, yeah, I kind of figured. If you haven't seen the season finale of Game of Thrones by now, then you must be the busiest person who ever lived. I mean, it came on last week. I mean, you, if you haven't seen it by now, then you're not going to watch it, man. You know, so Game of Thrones season finale off off the you know off the chain man like it was off the yells above yeah it was off the yells above man if you if you remember when you were a kid and you were riding your bike really hard and the chain came off so it was off the chain game of thrones episode was similar to when you were a kid riding your bike and the chain came off when the chain comes off it is off the chain so that's that's what the episode was man um you had Sansa killing everybody, kill at will. Like Screwface said on one of my favorite Steven Seagal movies, everyone must dead. <laughs> but, like, 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 like everyone must dead on Game of Thrones, man. Like you never, man, you never know who's gonna die on Game of Thrones, man. It's one of the things I love about it, but it's also one of the things I hate about it. Yeah, definitely, and. You know, if you get attached to certain characters like I did, man, you know, I, I always got to go for the bad guys. So Tywin Lannister, no longer with us. Ramsey Snow slash Bolton, no longer with us. <laughs> Sir, Sir Gregor Clegane, kind of with us. How do you feel about Cersei allowing Sir Gregor just to come in? And I don't know what he did to Septim Ella, but I know it wasn't good. It's a saying in the hood, man. Um... I don't know if it's in the hood. I think it's just the same. Uh, what comes around goes around, man. And and Karma's a mother sucker. So um, she was she was torturing uh, Cersei's earlier in the in the season, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Correct. I mean, turnabout is fair play. I mean, now Cersei has the upper hand, and who better to inflict that pain than her Frankenstein? 
I mean, I don't know what. I mean, who knows? We won't know until next season exactly what happened in that room, man. But um, she said that, you know, she told her that she was ready to die. She said, oh, no, you're not going to die today. <laughs> like, so, like, so she's going to get tortured for quite some time, man. Then you had Arya Stark coming back, you know what I mean? The, and, and, and avenging her brother and her mother um, who were murdered at the Red Wedding, man. It was a great episode, Pierre. Just a great episode, man. And and like I said, if you don't watch Game of Thrones, um, you know, I'm sorry that you are not a, a, a good human being, okay? Unfortunately, we have gotten so off topic that it's not even... It's <laughs> what not are even we talking funny. about? Um, the USA Men's oh, the basketball Olympic team. Men's- Announced Harrison Barnes, very much a head scratcher. Not sure how he made it on the team, but you know, Harrison Barnes. No, what am, Harrison Barnes is a pretty good basketball player. Just not sure if he's one of the best in the country to go in and represent the United States at Rio. Is all I'm saying. This, you're exactly right, man. Um, I don't know about Harrison Barnes making that team. I guess I mean he's a good player and everything, but when you think of a you know Olympic team or some of the best players in the world, you don't think of Harrison Barnes. Again, you got KD, Melo, Kyrie. Those are some of the best players in the world. You got a pair of teammates from the Raptors, DeRo- uh, Demar Derozan and Kyle Lowry, DeAndre Jordan, um, just to name an, um, another one. But the one player who I'm so excited to see. And I'm, I'm I'm happy that he is trying to 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 bring his story full circle and conquer that demon is Paul George, who during the last Olympic cycle had that gruesome leg injury. Um, if you recall, um, and um, he was out for uh, uh, the year in the NBA season. Paul George is going to be on this team. Happy to see him to to make that team and and to see him represent the USA in Brazil, man. So. The U.S. men's national team, I expect them to win a gold medal. I mean, how can you not win a gold medal? You play in the NBA. I mean, you got a team full of NBA players and not just a team full of scrubs. You have a team full of all-stars. Everyone on the roster has made an all-star team except for head scratcher Harrison Barnes. It's, it's amazing. Like Harrison Barnes must have the best agent in the world <laughs> uh, because it's, it's rumored that he's going to be getting – a, a near max contract in NBA free agency, but I digress. I don't want to pile on Harrison Barnes because, of course, he is a Tar Heel, and I don't love UNC. I don't hate him um, because hate is such a strong word. I don't let that occupy my heart. But um, come on, Harrison Barnes on the Olympic team. I digress. He won't be getting a max contract if KD is in town next year. I'll tell you that for a fact, Jack. No, not a max contract from the Warriors. It's talking about the Philadelphia 76ers are trying to give him oh my God. excess of $90 <laughs> million. Dollars. Are they trying to go from bad to worse? <laughs> What's going on with Philadelphia, man? I guess they have to spend the money somewhere. I mean, I have no idea, man. You got Harrison Barnes, Dwight Howard. I mean, they're even talking about Nick Batoon, which is a good player, <laughs> getting a max contract. Nick Nick Batum. It's like the the American government. They got money to burn. NBA free agency is going to be vi- pretty interesting, man. But um, basketball, like I said, basketball season in the NBA just ended. But it hasn't really ended yet because they're talking about free agency. They're also talking about the U.S. men's national team. So basketball is still in our foremost thoughts. And, and speaking of basketball, I know I wanted to kind of segue our next segment in. Missed the interview, but you conducted um, an interview with a friend of the show, Mr. Al Daniel. Al has coached at a lot of universities, and he coached at the University of Tennessee under Buzz Peterson during the same time that Pat Summit, who just passed recently, was the women's head basketball coach at UT. He had a unique experience because he came around Coach Summit's really last hurrah as far as national championships go. He was there when she recruited Candace Parker. Candace Parker came in, won some national championships there on her way to being the number one pick in the WNBA draft. So he had a, he had a lot of time that he spent with, with Coach summon and he talks about it in the interview and we'll get into the interview on the next segment but he talked a lot about you know going into coach summit's office just to talk basketball you know and, and al has been around some pretty knowledgeable pretty legendary coaches you know and, and as he was saying coach summit's 
basketball IQ was right up there with all of them. Rest in peace to to the legendary 